We'll start this worksheet by looking at the Boyle's relationship, the inverse relationship of pressure and volume. So Boyle's law is P1 V1 equals P2 V2. And we're going to start with something a little more theoretical. So if the volume of a piston of an engine, and we arbitrarily assign that as one, um, if that decreases to one fifth of its original volume and a gasoline vapor is compressed, assuming the temperature does not change, what happens to the pressure? Well, since P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2, then in order for this to be equal, in, if I arbitrarily assign my pressure as one, in order for this to be equal, and I said a half, and it's a fifth, then the pressure must increase by fivefold. So number two, let's do some calculations. If the volume of a gas is 20.4 liters when the pressure is 925 kilopascals at a constant temperature, a change in pressure causes the volume of the sample to change. If the new volume is 30.6 liters, then what is the new pressure? Well, you can leave your units as kilopascals. You do not have to change them, but you do have to make sure that you understand that P where P1 and V1 are and keep them together. Remember, the equation we're working with is P1V1 equals P2V2. So I've assigned my ones here, and P2 is what we're looking for. So now I'm going to fill in my equation. and perform the algebra. So 925 times 20.4, and then I will divide that by 30.6, and I get a value of 18870 kilopascals. Now, that's a lot. Um, we have to look for our significant digits. We have three significant digits in all of our quantities here. So I'm gonna put this in scientific notation. So one, two, three, four. And this is what I would report for my pressure. 1.89 times 10 to the fourth kilopascals, because I need three significant digits. So number three, a piston compresses. And so I have a volume one of 2.50 liters of air at STP. That means my pressure is defined as one atmosphere. That's not one atmosphere, one significant digit. It's defined that way. And it compresses that much air to a volume. So my new volume is 0 0.77 liters. So what is the final pressure? Again, I fill in my values. So 2.50 liters times one atmosphere, and that's a definition, not a significant digit, times P2 times 0 0.77 liters. So I'm going to need two significant digits here. So 2.50 divided by 0.77, that's the algebra, and I get a new pressure of 3.2 atmospheres. That is two significant digits to report. Number four, a 2.0 liter vessel, so I have a volume of 2.10 liters, I said that wrong, contains 4.65 grams of nitrous oxide or dinitrogen oxide at a pressure of 1.00 atmospheres. I'm not sure what to do with this one yet. What will be the pressure of the gas in a container that's half the size? So this is extra information. You don't need that information in order to solve this problem. So what will be the pressure? So we have a questionable pressure when the volume is half the size. So what's half of 2.1? Well, it's 1.05. So I fill in my equation, so P1, V1, equals P2 that I don't know, V2, and I perform that calculation. So 1 times 2.1 divided by 1.05, I get a P2 value of 2.00 atmospheres. Now we're going to work with Charles' law. Charles' law is a directly proportional relationship of volume and temperature. So V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2, and T is in Kelvin, always Kelvin. 
So 74.3 liters, so I have a volume, 74.3 liters of oxygen gas is cooled from 59 degrees Celsius. So I have a T1, and it's given to me in degrees Celsius, so I need to convert that into Kelvin. And when I do that, I get 332K. I'm just adding 273 here. And I have a new temperature, and that new temperature is a negative 21 degrees Celsius. Again, I'm going to add 273 to it and get a new temperature of 252K. So I put my variables into my equation. V2 is the one that I don't have, so I need to have 74.3 liters over 332K is equal to V2 that I don't know over 252K. And then we solve the algebra. Now, it might be easiest if you do some cross multiplication. So 74.3 times 252 is it. Well, why don't I just write it out? So 74.3 times 252, this is cross multiplication, is equal to 332 times V2. Now you can solve by multiplying these two, these two numbers, 74.3 and 252, and then dividing by 332 to get a volume, a new volume, with three significant digits of 56.4 liters. But why do we use three significant digits? If our temperature was originally given in two, and that's because when we calculate, we had three. So we go with three significant digits. Number six, a balloon inflated air conditioned room. So we have a T1 value of 27 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna add 273 to that immediately and get 300. I'm gonna put a dot there, make sure all of those digits are significant. And we have a volume of V1 of 4.0 liters. And we heat that, so our T2 is now 57 degrees Celsius, but I need to add 273 to it in order to get a new temperature of 330. Again, I'm going to put my dot there, make sure everybody's significant. So what is the new volume? Well, V1 over T1 is equal to V2, which I don't know, over T2. Cross multiply. So my 4.0 times 330 is equal to 300 times V. So 4 times 330, then divide by 300, is going to give me a new volume of 4.4 liters. Now, why two significant digits here? because this had two significant digits. Number seven, under constant pressure conditions, so V and T are at play here, the sample of hydrogen gas initially at 88 degrees Celsius, so I convert that into Kelvin, so that, eight, that 88 degrees becomes 361K, and an initial volume, I have 9.6 liters, is cooled until the final volume is 3.4 liters, so what's the final temperature? Well, V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. This time I don't know T2. So again, I cross multiply. 9.6 times T2 is equal to 3.4 times 361. So 3.4 times 361 divided by 9.6, I get a T2 value of 127.8 Kelvin. Now let's look at our sig figs here. I have two sig figs here and two sig figs here, so I really can only report two significant digits. So I would call this 1.3 times 10 squared Kelvin. Number eight. So we, this time we have our gas in a balloon, we have a volume. So V1 is 0 0.30 liters and T1 is 150 degrees Celsius. We need to add 273 to that in order to get our new temperature or our Kelvin temperature of 423K. And we have our volume, our new volume is 0 0.55 liters. We're looking for T2. So we fill in our equation. So we have V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. And T2 is what we don't know. So we cross multiply. And 
and then do the arithmetic. So 423 times 0.55 divided by 0.3, we get a T2 value of 775.5 Kelvin. Check your significant digits. We have two significant digits here, so we can only report two significant digits. So this would be 7.8 times 10 squared Kelvin. And number nine, so a sample of gas has a volume, so V1 is equal to 1.52 liters when its temperature, T1, is 18 degrees Celsius. So 18 degrees Celsius, we're going to add 273 to it to make it into Kelvin. I get 291 Kelvin. So if the temperature is increased so that I have a new T2 to 32 degrees, so 32 degrees Celsius plus 273, I'm going to end up with 305 Kelvin. Then what is the new volume? Well, let's fill in our equation. So 1.52 over 2.91, that's V1 over T1, is equal to V2, which I'm looking for, over T2, which is 305. So 291 V2 equals 1.52 times 305. So to do the arithmetic, it's 1.52 times 305 divided by 291. You should get a volume then of 1.59 liters. Now let's double check. We had three sig figs here. We used three sig figs in our temperature when we did our calculation. So three sig figs for our volume. So here in number 10, we have a V1 of 21.50 liters of a gas at 14 degrees Celsius, we add 273 to it to get our Kelvin temperature of 287K. Um, we're told what our pressure is and we're heated to expand a volume. What is the temperature if the pressure remains constant? So that is extra information, we do not need that pressure. But we are expanding the volume and that is what we're looking for, is that V2. And we're told, nope, that's the T2 we're looking for, T2. We're told that the new volume is 80.00 liters. So now we can fill in our uh, equation. So we have V1 over T1. So 21.5 divided by 287 is equal to V2, which is 80 over T2, which is what we're looking for. Do the cross multiplication. So 21.50 T2 is equal to the product of 80 times 287. So we find our T2 by dividing both sides by 21.5 and get a T2 value of 1067. Now that's four significant digits. Both of our measured quantities here were four significant digits, so we're gonna keep it even though we did do a little bit of uh, goofy stuff with the other temperature. So we'll keep those four sig figs for fun. And then number 11, if a sample of gas was changed to occupy 6.8 liters, so here we have a volume of 6.8 liters at 376 Celsius, so I need to add 273 to that in order to make it Kelvin. I get 649 Kelvin. And one atmosphere, what was its volume at STP? Well, the pressure is the same. That's extra information. We don't need it. But standard temperature is zero degrees Celsius, which is also 273 Kelvin. So we're going to use Charles' law again, and we use V1 over T1 is equal to V2, which is what we're looking for, over T2, which is 273. Do the cross multiplication. So 649 V2 is equal to 6.8 times 273. Divide both sides by 649, and I get a volume of 2.86 liters. Oh, but I didn't do the significant digits, so that's not my answer. I need two significant digits of 2.9 liters. That is the answer that I would report.